All right, let me get this stack of soon to be tens out the way. That's going to be for different content. It's a different episode. But uh, we had some stuff for uh, my bruh, Gaetan. Uh, it's not even an order, but um, yeah, basically we got we got a little trade going and um, getting him all his goods. Um, he wanted to go deep into MTG, and uh, we start with something crazy, something little little common giant tortoise light mana 9.5, something like this. And the peak of the pandemic was you know 4,000, 4,500 plus US dollars for an Arabian Nights common. Nowadays, it's a little over 1K, but, you know, uh, some people, like Gaetan, think that uh, this is a card to go after. You know, it's a uh, population, I think it's in the 20s or something like that, only 20-something 9.5s of this giant turtle and other, many other light mana variants are in the world, which is 9.5, Gold Arabian Nights, Gold Arabian Nights. STDs, also known as the Stone Throwing Devils, one of the Woke 7. These are the Dark Mana. These aren't that valuable, maybe, you know, a couple hundred bucks. But this, the Light Mana one, Light Mana, this thing is a four-figure card. I think even in a bad market, it's a five-figure card if it's only, you know, one more 9.5. So this is, you know, I don't know if this was a gold label, if it's plus 0.5, be like a twelve to fourteen thousand dollar card. Yes, even today, because I think these are sub population twenty. That said, nine quad plus plus is a four figure card. Glad to uh, bring this into a nice new home. This card was posted online for a while. Um, there are some offers in the fifteen hundred to two thousand range, but I I value the Shockerzad at uh, you know nine point five basic plus at roughly two k. Um, yeah, and I'm getting appropriate flesh and blood trade value. There are a lot of low balls at 800 to 1,000, but people went up to about 1.5, and I just said, nah, you know, know what she's worth. Got a good trade value out of Chakrazad. Finally, Old Man of the Sea, another big one, 9.5 Arabian Night Slab. So these are not easy to get. This stack right here would probably be what, during the height of the pandemic was six, seven, five, eight, maybe 10, 12. It's worth less than that right now. I'm not measuring. I don't, I don't know what the stack is, but it's definitely not five figures, but it's still, still mid four. And, uh, just to round out the trade, uh, Mr. Gaetan had never, never had a cold volcano. So I got him a really nice copy cold volcano red in the leisure. This is like compared to the, how wrecked the print run is of uh, Rainbow Foam Majestics and Arcane. This is this might as well be a gem mint. You might as well put this thing in a museum. This it's you know it's that like with three three bad corners. That's actually good condition. What else? We got a Sonic Boom. He just wanted any old Sonic Boom. He's like, just give me your worst. I'm actually low on this uh, specific skew. I need to collect more. And a Cold Foil Metacarpus node. So. These needed to go to, uh, you know, out to the good old Asia Pacific, and they're making it right after this video. But uh, yeah, appreciate the trade. I'll probably toss something in, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Welcome to Fabled Hunters. I'm Yanji. I'm Saint. And today we're going to open some stuff. Yes, we are going to open some stuff. It's not going to be too many items, but I think these are just significant purchases in light of how the general uh, TCG market is doing. They're varied TCGs, so I'm um, going to open a couple couple packages. We got a couple packages. We got a grab, couple grab packages here. Of, yep. Of TCGs. Different TCGs. You want to take the lead? All right, this is, uh, I'm assuming an eBay. Yeah, this. TC2, at least they're being just somewhat discreet about it. I'm gonna wash my leg just in case. Don't take off my leg. <laughs> Congratulations right. on your recent purchase. Recent purchase. Ooh. Yeah. We got a Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan Final Season Armin. 
Um, I think of this card in Black Label as a grail because I believe out of all the, I think there are five uh, SSP hero cards yeah. in, well, the heroes of Attack on Titan. I believe Armin might be the least popular because there's like Levi, Mikasa, there's uh, Eren, there's Armin, and I, f I forgot who the fifth was. Is it Sasha or Hange? I, I forget, but yeah. Basically, I think Armin is the least popular of the gang, mm -hmm. and uh, because he's the least popular, he's the least graded, and because he's the least graded, there's the fewest tens. And I, I want to bring this up and, and showcase this because I got this card for something like $600. Yeah. Uh, there was a point in the crazy boom where an ungraded raw version of Armin was like 500 or 550 And now I literally got a BGS 10, like a perfect rendition of this card yeah. for just, I think the eBay price was like 585 You're welcome to look it up or maybe our editor could put it up. Uh, this copy went to me. And, I mean, I always wanted a set of perfect uh, Weiss cards. And, I mean, I could take this out of the void of damage. It's okay. It's authenticated. It's a it's a black label 10. It's not damaged. It's already in, like, three protective cases plus a protective box. So, it's okay, eBay. I, I'll take it from here now. <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, this is gorgeous. Just you've got the natural sunlight reflecting in. This is a beautiful card. It's got the gold signature. And, you know, if, if I liked something, this this card at one point was probably selling for three or $4,000. Now that we're in the depths of the bear market, Rudy says that, uh, you know, uh, Weiss is turning around, but we're, we're still in the depths of the bear market. Now is as good of a time as any to acquire the assets that you're looking for. And I'm not only acquiring flesh and blood assets. I'm acquiring other assets as well. So there you go. There's one. I'll let you do two as well because that was a little one. This is from G&G &G Emporium. Hopefully it's not, you know, a box with uh, G.I. Joe cards inside. That that could be bad or, you know, whatever. Monster Pail Kids. Garbage, garbage Pail Kids. Yes, Garbage Pail Kids would be bad as well. We're looking for big money here. This is uh, supposedly a big money card. I'm surprised that although it was purchased on eBay, it was not handled through the authentication process. So I don't know why that is. Usually anything over, uh, I think 300 US dollars per card should be handled through authentication process. But this one, for whatever reason, was not. It's weird, really, really weird. Now this is a card. Hopefully it was not mislabeled. If it was mislabeled, then I would understand. Hopefully I did not get bamboozled. Okay, do you know what this is? Uh, no. Well, what is this? This is the back, and fortunately it's the back, it's a full art back yeah. of the Philosopher's Stone. Ooh. And this is Alpha, there's an A right there. There's an A right there, that's how you tell it's Alpha. You see the Alpha right there, A at the bottom? Right. Uh, so, I don't know you're getting into collecting sorcery. I'm not. I'm totally not. This is Sorcery Alpha, Sorcery Con Contested Realm, Alpha Foil. Um, there's something like 20,000 or 25,000 boxes of Sorcery Alpha ever printed. Yeah. And within, I don't know, 100 boxes, there might only be one foil um, unique relic. Because there's not even one unique relic per box. Yeah. Might take like a case of five or six to get one unique relic. So there's supposedly some number between 100 and 250 of these in the world. And this is a BGS 9.5 uh, basic plus with a 10. So there's only one quad. So this is essentially tied for the second highest graded um, Philosopher's Stone in the world. Mm -hmm. And... Again, we've only opened up one box of sorcery ever on this yeah. channel. I've only opened up that one box of sorcery. I've only gotten one case of sorcery from um, Goblin Reserve. Yeah. I still have it. I still haven't sold it. But sometimes you look at the market and you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, there's, call it 250 or less of these. This yeah. is the second best one graded. The Alpha Magic the Gathering versions of the Alpha Black Lotus are worth, I don't know, 700 or let's lowball it. Let's call it 
six hundred thousand U.S. dollars. Yeah. Some of them, the quad or, or better ones, are you know said to have transacted in the past at over a million. And this card, I believe, it ended at some number like six thousand U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. And I remember that this card raw went for seven to eight thousand in the sorcery groups. Mm -hmm. Right. So I kept this on watch. I'm like, how bad is the market? And I put something like sixty nine hundred sixty nine dollars, right? <laughs> like I like deal. And no, no, it's it's an auction. Yeah, yeah. And I literally got it for lower than the peak of um, of the Alpha Sorcery Philosopher Stone. Yeah. And relative to what I have in TCGs, this is like a fingernail. It's not even a finger. It's a drop in the bucket. Yeah. So. Um, it's great to hold on to the very top assets of a uh, a card type, right? Yeah. Uh, where's the other one? Yeah. So yeah, these are these are amongst like there's probably what five of these, and this is this can't be beat. There's something like twelve or thirteen of these in nine point five with only one quad, and uh, I can only do better by getting the quad. I don't know who has it. Whoever has it is probably holding on to it. Yeah. And this way, I can participate in a completely different TCG and a completely different asset class, I could say, Eric, sorcery, sorcery gang, sorcery nation, <laughs> sorcery world, go shill this up to the, not shill, I'm not calling them shills, but let's, let's pump this up to, you know, the Alpha Centauri galaxy, pump this up past the moon, I don't care, make it go up, you know, 1000x, I'm happy for you guys, and I'll still be able to participate at the forefront of that TCG for a really, really, really small, call it an investment, mm -hmm. or it's just really good to have. For, for perspective, again, this Philosopher's Stone, the first spell of each element by the bearer each turn costs one less. Yeah. This is basically the Black Lotus of sorcery, Okay. right? It's a unique relic, so there's only one of, yeah. and it's his magnum opus. So there's different, you know, weird uh classical words magnum opus like the biggest piece the grandest piece so they literally had set this because i believe there's like amethyst core ruby core whatever cores yeah they're kind of like moxin so this yeah spell of each element you can cast multiple you can get multiple manas mm -hmm. off of this philosopher's stone once you drop it so I mean, I could call it a Black Lotus. It also reminds me of a Soul Ring because it costs one and it gives you multi-action multi, multi oh, action yeah. on yeah, resources. Sure. But they just call it the Black Lotus of Sorcery TCG. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's why. Does that make sense to you? Why, you know, as an avid TCG fan, uh, I'd want to collect. I mean, this isn't something I don't care about. This isn't like, like, I care about this a lot more than I care about, for example, MetaZoo. Like, you couldn't pay me you could literally pay me thousands of dollars and I would sooner burn the MetaZoo on camera than have ever opened MetaZoo, okay. right? Whereas Eric's a colleague, I call him a friend, I consider him a friend from the MTG days, and I wish for nothing but for his success and the success of the game. So do you, do you, do you get the, the logic you're, and rationale? You're just getting in a, a piece. Huh? You're not actively... I'm not actively participating in the community, yeah. but I'm, I saw a really, really low risk, low cost way to enter in yeah. to the highest end, like to participate in the highest echelon of sorcery. Yeah. So I wish them well. Like I said, I wish the community goes up 100x. And, you know, I don't need to cash out for 100x. I'll cash out for 80x of my cost basis of the Philosopher's Stone. And there you go. But, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, show us the goods. The, what, what have we all been waiting for? Oh, the... Well, I I don't want to set it up like that. It's nothing crazy yeah. like that. Yeah. This is a package. Like after all, we are a flesh and blood channel, and we do. I I, I busted out the uh, tunic mat, probably like one of three hundred or something like that. Yeah. Uh, for a reason. This is a package from Taiwan, and uh, probably I'll I'll have showcased the prequel video and whatnot, but there's also a message uh, tied to this package. What I traded for this package, and, and then some, was um, about five figures in Arabian Nights, MTG 93 Arabian Nights slabs. Okay. Many of them are 9.5 graded ones, which 
are really, really hard to, to source. Like Arabian Nights 1993 product 9.5 is not the same thing as opening up a flesh and blood box yeah, yeah. in 2024 and grading a 9.5. Like those are like some people try to say that they're correlated, but it's like night and day. Some Arabian Nights cards in 9.5, just in 9.5 basic can net you a 100 to 200 X return. And there will be active buyers, yeah. very, very wealthy, very, very willing buyers on the market yeah. seeking that product. Whereas a 9.5 for flesh and blood, let me just call a spade a spade, will be for the most part under 2X, right? Like maybe even 1.5X or less these days because, you know, flesh and blood is dead. Everybody's just selling to each other. Nobody actually collects the game despite having data of player slabs being you know, the hottest thing and creating the hottest growth for slab cards ever. Um, so this is what I received in return for the, uh, you know, call it 10 to 12,000 worth of primarily uh, BGS Arabian Nights cards in high grade. So you can take the lead. Oh, these are, these are old PCG. Old PCG. Labels. They are not going to stay in their labels for long. From yesteryear. From yesteryear. Yes, these are PCG US slabs. Let me see where they get up there. Yeah. The grade almost doesn't matter, especially like the joke of a surface <laughs> grade because they didn't know how to grade surface back yeah. then. So, yeah. Oh, now we're in Arcane. I, I didn't realize there was also Arcane, but those are the... These are in a specific order. They're just... Yeah, so a bunch of common cold foils. Common cold foils, yep. And now we're getting to the good stuff. Oh, there's there's some good stuff over there. Yep. Mask and Here's a mask. That's a big one. And then now they're breaking scales. These are just uh, all going into a binder sooner or later. Yeah. They're going into my uh, binder collection. I've got some mix of Arcane, some mix of Welcome to Wraith. And uh, <coughs> yeah... Any astute astute viewer will say, hey, that doesn't look like you got $10,000 worth of cold foils. You got much less than that. Yeah. And I think that number is, I don't know, somewhere in the mid four figure range. Because I would, I would estimate probably around with the scalers and four or five thousand. Four or five, yeah. Mid four figure range, something like that. Mask of momentum is big. Yeah. And a bunch of common cold foils. I, I would say the, the gauntlet's big. This for Rune Blade is okay. Any no rune is okay. Uh, the mask I talked about, the breaking scales is worth a little more than Come average. On. Yeah. Yeah. This is very, very nice. Yeah. It's 500 plus. Cross strap is, Stra cross strap is okay. And yeah, that's, everything else is in the low, you know, 100, 150, but there's, there's still volume there. Now, the reason why, uh, originally I just wanted the mask and it was this really small deal. It was like the mask for... I think like a Shaharzad or something like that. Yeah. And then my buddy Gaetan, GB, in Taiwan, it's uh, this is one of uh, hundreds of four rows. Here's a four row. I don't want to lean too much, but here's a four row, all of Alpha cards. Now the reason why it's uh, Saint and uh, Mr. G is because we had made a joint purchase of Alpha cards. And these are all Welcome to Wraith Alpha. This is just, okay. it's not interesting, just the tokens at the beginning. I think it's sorted by rarity. So basically, uh, we, we purchased a lot of pinks. Yeah. And I think, oh, there you go. Bunch of pink sinks and whatnot. These are pink belows. Pink sink. The best sink, right? So that's a lot of pink belows. And uh, Mr. G was just like, hey, man, I appreciate what you're trying to do with Alpha. We, we had co-purchased this from uh, Asia Pacific, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. And I don't know, our cost basis is probably close to 6,000 USD. So we put in close to 3,000 each. Yeah. And he was just like, man, we're going to grade them. Now it doesn't make sense to grade them. I was like, I still like Alpha. I'm willing to hold on to him. He's like, if you don't mind, can you cash me out? Um, I'll give you some extra cold foils. Can you, uh, can you give me, you know six other things from Arabian Nights. And the whole idea is right now, there's not a lot of liquidity in flesh and blood, non-foil, pink strips, rares, anything, Yeah. right? But you may like them, I personally like them. And 
at this time, people may like other things. People may want to diversify and go a different direction. It's it's their right to. It's Gaetan's right to. I'm not here to diss Gaetan. He he told me to, you know, just don't be a dick on camera and just, you know, uh, give a give a honest, good faith mention about the contents of the deal. And he's like, right now, holding on to. 2,000 or 3,000 alpha flesh and blood cards is not a great value proposition for the next two to five years. Yeah. You, you, you could see the logic in that, right? Yeah. And instead, I would rather consolidate my value into a couple of four-figure Arabian Nights cards, right? Because I like Arabian Nights. I think they're cheap right now. I think Arabian Nights is basically 70% off, Yeah. right? I would argue that flesh and blood alpha is also 70% off, right? Sure. And yeah, as a result, he's just like, let me get out of my equity. Oh my God, look at this. See, he, that's, that's one thing. He can't just sit around and say, and pull out, you know, a stack, a small stack of steel blade shunts, which I don't know, population three or 4,000. Yeah. And say, oh, look, I can just go out and enjoy my five, 10, 15, oh, 16. Still, still that's five play sets of Steel Blade Shunt, right? These cards, to me, will always be very iconic, very important to the whole theme of the game. I think you have to open, like, about, <clears throat> I would say, like, three, three boxes to get a play set of all the rares. So that's, like, 15 boxes. Yeah, 15 of, of alpha worth of rares, Yeah, right? And I don't, from what I remember, there's no e-strikes in here. Let me see if there's, oh, uh, let, let me see in terms of the good stuff. We got we to gotta scale through it. Uh, I, I haven't even de-sleeved some of this stuff. Yeah. Like, they've got, okay, they've got only four copies of Pink Snatch, the best Snatch, and uh, many more copies, because I guess the original seller, he, uh, he only he sold the pink ones. He had success selling the pink Too many ones. Blue snatches. Yes, blue snatches. This is a bad snatch ratio. This is an unhealthy snatch ratio. But at the same time, look, there's energy potions, potions of strength. Potion of strength is less popular, right? Yeah, I think it's just uh, right now. I mean, like if they ever make, you could make like some kind of setup combo deck off of like buffing the power of some attack, maybe. Okay. But just... energy and and time snap are the big ones, right? Yeah. But even even so, even if you know this collection inc took out all the pink snatches, we still had the pink sinks. We have, you know, wow, that's 15, 30 time snap potions in alpha. Yeah. Right. Sigils. It's just really really awesome to have all these alpha cards. I I see some other content creators. I see some other collectors, and they're like, you know, I have a stack this big of alpha and that's a big deal then you got people like bronson that are collecting whole percentages like one percent of all the alpha commons and i'm like well i i want i want more than that i want i want the other cards too and bear with me guys this is just going through the last little bit singing steel blades look at that oh my god that's just see that's beautiful where, where else am i going to get a set of our collection of what five 13 a baker's dozen of alpha singing steel blade yeah remembrances eight remembrances basically a bunch of uh super rares cool super rares route and i think very few very few at the top end very 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 few majestics but even this one day, I think Alpha Rampage, Alpha Pink Strip is going to be sought after, right? It's a pretty good art of Reinar. Tim being mad, right? Rampage mm -hmm. mode. BRB, Blood Rush Bellow is a huge deal for Brutes. Yep. It's coming back into prominence. Spinal Crush, I think it's even worth more than Crippling Crush right now, right? Uh, should be. This is like, because it's a generic Guardian, right? Yep. In Demand, we've got Glintz. Glintz, this was a very iconic piece of artwork. Alexander Makov. I, I probably like an original art of this if we could get Alexander to do an original repaint. And there's no, you know, tomes or e-strikes, but still a bunch of steel blade supremacies. So 
You know, I think you can go either way. I don't, we negotiated and negotiated and honestly over negotiated the deal. And the deal probably took like six weeks for us to go back and forth on who wanted what. Yeah. I honestly didn't want to give up value. I, I was like, Gaetan, it's a good idea to hold on to your side of the value. We could grade them out one day, blah, blah, blah. He's like, it's just not the same. I don't get to shuffle through them. And even just doing this, I haven't done this for months. That was really enjoyable. I don't know. I mean, you got to really understand, really like the cards. Yeah. Like we just went through something like 3000 alpha cards and this is its own little self-contained thing. And now as a result, uh, I'm going to take the sticker off and this will uh, find itself into the amazing, you know, offsite alpha vault never to be seen again and consolidated and re-sleeved and whatnot. Black site. Yes, alpha black site. But, 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 I don't know. I, I wish Gaetan all the luck in the world for his call because at this moment, his highest of high-end um, Arabian Nights assets are more important to him. He's prioritized him. He's made that call. Whereas I'm like, well, you know, to me... It could be the fifth highest rated, you know, Chakrazad or the seventh highest rated Old Man of the Sea. They just don't mean the same to me anymore. Just, yeah, you could call those like a $1,500 or $2,000 slab. To me, it's just, you know, a piece of cardboard that has some sort of secondary market value to them. Whereas this, I don't know, this, you, like, I, Steel Blade Supremacy, you know, Pink Strip is probably like, what, 30 or 50 bucks in the market? I don't know. I don't care. It's worth more than, you know, dollars to me right now. And we each just pivoted. We each just leaned in to the assets that we liked. So I would say that there is a monetary lesson in terms of, if you don't mind, like, you know, I'm Asian. We're Asian. We like good deals. These are good deals. Yeah. Right? Whereas this, this is about our principles. This is about aligning ourselves with what we believe in. Right? Mm -hmm. Aligning ourselves with a game, putting our time, putting our passion into a game that we love, which is what this channel has all been about, which is about, uh, which is what this flesh and blood journey has been about. And for Gaetan, he's still, you know, all in on flesh and blood. He's still got plenty of assets on flesh and blood. Truth be told, these are his extras outside of his uh, binder collections yeah. and, you know, his playable collections. He could still, you know, flex a whole you know, uh, set of um, Alpha and uh, Arcane First Cold Foils when he shows up to his armories or his callings or even the Pro Tour. But uh, he, he wanted to move up and get a really, really nice set of uh, Arabian Nights. For me, I wanted to add on to my collection of, um, you know, Pink Steel Blade Supremacies, Pink Sinks, Pink Routes, Pink Snooches, the best snooch. Only four pink snooches, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's all. Hopefully, some you know some of you guys will understand. Uh, some of you guys will hate in the comments and say it's all bullshit. And uh, we are we are paid actors of Legend Story Studios, right? When are when are your royalty checks coming in, Yanji? No, I would like to be paid. <laughs> I would like. We would love to be paid actors, <laughs> but we're just doing this, you know, out of passion and actual appreciation genuine appreciation for a really awesome card game and some other card games that we like you know so yeah that's it for today hopefully you guys learned something on the mail day hopefully you can exchange some stories about what you're doing because um i think the big message here is not everything has to be done for cash there was no cash exchange in this just a couple of passionate collectors uh just trading assets that they both liked but Cash you know. is exchanged to the shipping companies. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this is the, the true the true meaning of a trading card game yeah. where you're trading cards and exchanging real valuable, real scarce assets, you know, across different asset classes. And uh, at the end, I would say everybody got exactly what they wanted. So wait a minute, Gaetan told me there was some stuff that ah ah I forgot. He wanted me to add this. He insisted. So, uh, one's for the little one. This is for Philia. Ooh, this is like a, a special polished dragon rock, uh -huh. I think. And uh, 
he had found this. He goes on expeditions within like, you know, caves and mountains and waterfalls and whatnot. Yeah. And gets these stones, which are unique to Taiwan. Uh, he, he threw these in. I have to give him a, something, but I'll give him something Kano related, but I'll have to save it for when I see him in person. So, yeah, this was a extra toss in. Something uh, local to uh, Taiwan and exclusive to Taiwan. Really cool. They've, they've got like different like marbling plus metal inside the stones. Yeah. Right? So this is for good luck. Thank you, Dragonstone, for the Year of the Dragon. Really appreciate it. For a uh, European, essentially white dude to be all like uh, into, uh, what is it, superstition and luck and mysticism. That's that's really cool that he has that level of appreciation for Asian culture. So thank you so much for the great deal, Gaetan. Viewers, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let us know if this is content you like. Let us know what your thoughts are. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, twiddle that notification button, support us on, you know, Fabled Hunters Patreon because you're also supporting the Runaways. Let's go Runaways, everybody. And that's it, guys. Bye. Bye. Just actually two more things uh, aside from the slabs, two stones. Uh, these are known as dragon bone stone. Uh, you can only find that in Taiwan. So this uh, is composed of uh, white jade, metal and slate. I polished that myself. Uh, these two have been polished like uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, the big ones for you and that one's for the little one uh, for Philia. So I continue to give that to her and that's for you too, to wish you good luck for this uh, Dragon uh, Lunar Year. All right, bro. So have a good one. Take care. Bye bye. All right, guys. Um, we just finished a filming day of Fabled Hunters. We're two boxes down. Uh, I won't mention what happened, but um, stuff happened, in, uh, especially in the second box. So uh, tune in to future episodes of Fabled Hunters and uh, we'll see what happened with this 959 case. Uh, welcome to Wraith Alpha.